The last time we looked at these scatter plots for um, all the beaches and we saw that there's a nonlinear uh, pattern, definitely a correlation between wave period and wave height. And so we added polynomial features and we were able to explain um, about you know four and a half percent of the variance when we did that. Um, but we can also see that another important factor here is going to be, well, which beach are we on? Each beach behaves a little bit um, differently. And this is going to be tricky because this is categorical data and the linear regression we're doing needs numeric data. And um, it doesn't really make sense to assign <coughs> um, uh, numbers to these beaches, right? Because, well, if I assign them one, two, three, four, five, six, um, it, Kalamut Beach isn't really halfway between 63rd Beach and Montrose Beach. So it'd be kind of arbitrary. Um, so what people will often do instead is have this one categorical column is you'll get six different numeric columns and, um, and the numbers in those will be what we call one hot encoding, right? So if a, if a given beach, right, for the first row is 30, 63rd Street Beach, then that column will have a one and the others will have zeros. If it's a Montrose Beach, then that third column will have a one and the other ones will have zeros. And, um, and this strategy in machine learning is called one hot encoding, right? And there's a one hot encoder that comes with sklearn. And uh, it turns out that the one hot encoder doesn't work great when we only want to apply it to certain columns. It's a little bit of a pain to do an sklearn. So we actually have to build our own transformer uh, based on that. So let's take a look at how, how the, this one works that comes with sklearn. I'm going to say from sklearn uh, preprocessing uh, import one hot one hot encoder and then then what do I want to do well I can uh, create one of them and then I can fit it to the data I'm going to fit it to but well, what I'm ultimately going to go for is um, the beach name which may be one of our categorical factors and um, and so I'm going to fit it to the training data and the beach name and, um, and then I may say, uh, after that, well, first off, let's just make sure that works. After that, I can transform, I could transform the test data if I wanted to. Let me, let me try that first. And, um, and we're gonna set this thing called a sparse array. We're not gonna worry too much about that in this class. I'm just trying to convert it to a regular array. And, um, and what this encoding means is, well, I have these six columns representing the six beaches. And, um, and this one here means that the first row uh, is the second beach, as is the second row. The third row is the fourth beach, so on and, and so forth. And this is absolutely data I could feed into a linear regression. And so I, I might want to do this on, on both of these. Um, I could do it on the, the test data if I wanted to later. I'm um, just trying to make sure that the beach names line up the same. Uh, it determines that at the time I do my fitting. Um, since it's very, here I'm doing train and then test, but if I'm doing train and then train, um, one of my options is that I can uh, do fit transport form and bind it into one. That's just kind of a convenience for me. <coughs> so that's all good. But um, the problem we're gonna run into is when I do both of these at the same time, I wanna do both beach name um, and wave period. Uh, let me actually, at my data here um, and let's look at the shape of this data i see that there are 16 columns uh, which is not what i want uh, the problem is that it's taking six different columns for beach name and then for the wave period there are actually 10 different values and we're getting 10 columns from that what i'd really like to end up with is seven columns um, six for the different beaches and then uh, just one for the wave period and um, and i wish there was some sort of configuration option here uh, but there doesn't seem to be. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to build our own, right? So uh, maybe I'm going to call this one uh, better uh, one hot. And that's a class. And the important methods for these things to have are fit and transform because this is an example of a transformer. And if you're a transformer, those are what you need. So I need to have a fit, something there. And then I need to have a transform. Okay, I'm going to need to have something there. 
And um, and so the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to have a, an Annette here, and like so. And um, and what I'm going to do in my Annette is I'm going to specify what the special column is, right? Because that's what I really wish I could do here. Um, I could say that I only want to do this encoding for beach name. And, um, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say self and then column. And down here, I'm just going to save that information, right? Okay. Now for fit, these things always need to have an X and a Y. And um, it doesn't really matter what the Y is for this kind of application. So I'm going to say none. Another rule, when I do a fitting, I have to return uh, return myself. And um, and that's because I can do things I can uh, say, you know, one hot encoder dot fit, and then whatever that returns, I can immediately call another method on it. It's a pattern sometimes people use, although um, uh, I don't do it too often. Oh, and, and you know what else I'm forgetting here is I need self. And then transform is, I'm learning that later, I only need x. <coughs> I don't need these y values. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a regular one-hot encoder inside of this one. I'm going to say self dot one hot equals one hot encoder, and um, and then down here when my better one hot encoder is told to fit, I'll ask this one to fit in the same way, right? I'm going to make that that do some fitting, right? So when when my better one fits. Then I'm going to fit, uh, but the distinction, right, is that I I don't want to do it um, to all of them, right? I just want to do it to my one column, right? So maybe maybe down here, let me just kind of I like to think about how I'm going to actually use it later. Maybe passing in each each name like that, right? So each name will be in in column, and then when when somebody calls fit on this one. When you call fit on this one, well, I'm only going to do it to that one, that one column, and um, and then down here the same deal. I'm going to just do the transformation to that one column. Transform. Okay, and that's going to give me a bunch of ones. Okay. So let me think about this. I have a lot to do here, right? To do uh, return old data to. Uh, all in a data frame. I have to do a little bit of work here, but let's just return this for now before I do too much work. Um, and um, and so down here, right, I'm calling a better hot encoder and then uh, fit transform and uh, and let, let's just try running that. And uh, well, I see I actually have to run this cell of course before I do that. And um, okay, better one hot one hot. Great, and um, and so I'm, I'm getting this error that it doesn't have a fit transform, right? I only have a fit, and then a transform. So you know what I could do is I could, I could do this fit transform, uh, and whatever that, that I could do that. The easier way is that if I can uh, just inherit that um, that inconvenience method here, right? I can uh, inherit from a base class and SK learn, <coughs> and uh, the base class that I want to inherit from is called transformer uh, mixin. So I'm going to say from sklearn uh, dot base, right? There's a bunch of base classes in here. I'm going to import transformer uh, mixin. And all this really does is it automatically gives me that fit transform method, right? I'm going to inherit it from there. And, uh, and that's going to call the combination of my two methods here. So I run that and, um, and uh, and well, oh, I'm going too fast, right? I need to import it first, then define it, and then I can actually call it. And um, and now I'm actually getting something similar to what I want, right? I'm getting those six columns. Uh, not quite what I wanted, right? I want the uh, not just the data about the beach, but the other old data too, um, about the wave period, for example. And I also um, would like it all to be in a data frame, so it's a little easier to understand. And so, so let's do this first part. Let's get it all in a data frame. So I'm going to say um, ones equals pd dot data frame, and I'm going to pass that in. And you see, I'm doing two array down here. I should do that up here actually. So I'm going to call that. I'm not going to need to do it down here anymore. And let me just run both of these. So I'm going to do that. <clears throat> 
Um, and and that, that's kind of working fine, right? Um, I'd like to put slightly better uh, column names on here, right? So I'm going to say columns equals, and um, well, all these columns are basically getting defined by the one hot encoder that I'm using, right? Uh, the OH. And the OH can tell me what uh, the names for these should be. And, um, and, and that's in a method called get feature names. So I'm going to say self.oh.get feature names like so. Okay, so that is good. And, um, and it's kind of weird names, right? It's fine, right? It's um, saying x0 because it's uh, saying that these six things were based on uh, the first column. I don't care about that. At least I can distinguish between what the different ones are. For example, I can see that this first row is uh, Calumet Beach. Okay, so far so good. I have six columns for the beach name, and, and the main thing I need to do now is I need to keep this in, right? And so, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to return pd.cat, and I need to have a, a tuple of data frames here. And um, let me think about this. If I said axis equals zero, um, here, let me, let me just kind of space this out, right? I'm going to say data frame one and data frame two. If I said axis equals zero, it would put this data frame um, above this one. But I'd really like this one to be on the left and this one would be the right. So zero is vertical, um, one is horizontal. Okay. And so what do I want for my two data frames? Um, well, one of them ought to be whatever the original data is, right? So I'm going to have um, X there. And then the second piece next to that <coughs> should, be, should be these ones. And so let me run that. And... Um, and uh, and that seems pretty good, right? So I think, uh, well, actually, what's going on here? You see that it's kind of weird with my index, right? Sometimes I have values here, but not here, or vice versa. You know what I better do is I better make sure that um, in this transform data that I have, I'm using the same index that x uses, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say index equals x dot index. So it lines up nicely, and, and, and it's good to sanity check these things, right? Otherwise, if I get this wrong, everything I do after this is going to be wrong. Okay, so this first one's Calumet Beach. Boom, there's a one under Calumet. Ohio, Ste Ohio Street Beach. Boom, there's a one under Ohio Street Beach. So that seems like it's kind of working well. Um, the last thing I might want to do, right, is that after I do this transform, everything needs to be numeric. So uh, it's good that I kept my wave period and have numeric data for this rest, but I need to drop this speech name uh, from X, right? So I'm going to say drop columns equals and self.column. I don't want that anymore. And uh, this drop from that original data frame is just creating a new data frame that doesn't have that column, right? It doesn't hurt the original. It's just going to mean that it's not in this output, right? So I'm going to do this. And run it and now i actually have very reasonable data um to be using for my linear for my linear regression right so that's all good let me just uh, run that and so i want to make this one of my uh one of my steps in my pipeline right uh, i went from explaining almost no variance to explaining about four and a half percent and so let's do this other to do part right so i'm going to say uh, I want to do uh, one hot encoding, and I'm going to create my class here, right? Or create an object from my class, and I need to say what column I, I care about, and um, and that's going to be beach name, right? Beach name is the one where I have to do one hot encoding, and uh, and I'm going to run that, and and hopefully this gets better than four and a half percent. Run that, and uh, and great, I'm getting almost close to 10% uh, now. There's no signs of overfitting. In fact, I'm doing better on my testing data uh, than my training data, right? So, so you can see that waves, right? That wave height is actually pretty unpredictable, right? There's still a lot of variance there, uh, but we're doing a lot better, right? Introducing both of these got us from almost nothing, right? It got us from, uh, let, me, let me do this. Let me just kind of review the history of what we've done. Um, right, so I did this. 
that was horrible, right? I was getting almost nothing. And then I added in some um, and I added in some polynomial features. Got about halfway there. And then finally added in the one hot encoding and we did even better, right? And one of the things you'll often want to do in these cases is after you've done that, maybe get rid of um, the first thing we did, right? Maybe the second thing we did added was good enough and it's not, right? We see that if we don't have the polynomial features, um, it's not very good. Another thing we might want to revisit is can we do better by cranking this up further? And it seems like um, the answer is still no, even after we added in the beach name, uh, it, that's not really helping us uh, improve the model further. So at this point, we're doing pretty well, and I think um, this will be the final model. In the next video, I'm actually going to show a little bit about how we can visualize uh, what the model is deciding, but this seems like a kind of a reasonable progress for now.